Hello, welcome to my website, Tips and Tools for Teaching and Learning. My name is Kent Wire. I'm the principal at Chanute High School in Chanute, Kansas. I'm also a doctoral student at the University of Arkansas. And this portion of the website, Tips and Tools for Teaching and Learning, is focused on teacher induction and mentoring programs. So I want to spend this time of this introductory video talking about teacher induction programs. The information on this website will be presented as a 10-week class, as if I'm teaching a 10-week class on teacher induction, mentoring, and etc. for new teachers or teachers that want to uh, be renewed or refreshed in their thinking about teaching. So this is video one and it's an introduction of sorts. And as mentioned, this portion of the website is designed as an online teacher induction and mentoring class. Keep in mind as we start that mentoring is only a part of teacher induction. Sometimes when uh, school districts think about teacher induction, the program becomes a one or two day orientation at the beginning of the school year or before the school year starts, the assign assigning of a mentor to a new teacher, and then depending upon the effectiveness of that mentor, that's about it, and that's the teacher induction program. And there should be so much more for uh, teachers to get them started off in their careers. We'll talk about teacher mentors in depth in video two. Now teachers really don't have much control over the effectiveness of an induction program. The induction program is largely determined by the school district officers or school district induction coordinator or principals or teacher leaders. L largely all the teacher can do is participate in the induction program and give all that they can, put all the effort that they can into that to become a better teacher and to be ready. Too many times uh, the program or the offerings from the school district just isn't enough to sustain what teachers need to get started off correctly in their in their teaching career. If you're just starting out in teaching or you just want to refresh yourself in your teaching career, this online class is for you because we'll be looking at research-based strategies that have been proven to help teachers. We'll be also looking at how to manage the classroom better looking how to, be, how to best utilize a mentor, looking at what you should expect from an induction program, and that's specifically what this video one what is What goes about. into an effective, successful teacher induction program? Well, more, more importantly, what should a teacher expect? So if you're receiving uh, services from your school district in an induction program, what do you expect from them? And if you're, if you're not, if we get finished with this and your induction program isn't providing you with the leadership that you need, the support, the resources, the information that you need, well, I would urge you not to be judgmental. Of course, that can only get you uh, barking up the wrong tree. But to look at what you can do to find opportunities to uh, meet the... Meet the uh, meet some of the, the uh, requirements of a good induction program on your own, perhaps by, from this website or from the readings on this website or videos on this website or from, a, from some other source. Uh, teachers are professionals, and if they know what they need to get better, then they need to seek that out diligently so that they can provide the best service to, the, to their students as possible. Teacher induction programs usually start off with one or two days of teacher orientation where the teacher becomes familiar with the management, the procedures of the school district and the kind of programs that they offer. And it's usually a lot of how to log on to your computer, how to get into the building and those kind of things. And those are certainly important. But a successful teacher induction program really should be go much deeper into things like what instructional strategies are used, uh, what part of of the building's learning community, what role will you play in that in that learning community? What team will you be on? What what are the norms or the expectations of you in working in in such teams? And those kind of things. So a successful teacher induction program should usually start with four or five days uh, with new teachers to the district in in that kind of process in getting inducted or excuse me in getting oriented into the building, into the district, into the expectations. Much like a teacher does in his or her classroom, to be successful, start off the year and let your students know exactly what's expected. The same kind of thing works with teacher induction programs or, or orientations. 
The second thing a teacher's induction program should do is assign a valued mentor to the new teacher. This isn't always the teacher that's been in the school district the longest or the oldest teacher on the, on the staff, but someone that can relate to the new teacher, help the teacher along, and someone that will take that responsibility seriously. Too many times there's such a wide range of services provided from a mentor to the mentee. Uh, all from hey, be sure you're you're at your door in the morning by 7:30, or the principal will be uh, writing you a note, or to one that actually comes in and participates in that in some of the daily activities of that teacher and helps them get along to, and maybe uh, invites them in to watch their class, so on and so forth. But that would be the part. The second part would be being assigned a mentor and the responsibility of the new teacher to make sure that they get as much from that mentor as possible. The third piece of a good induction program every teacher should expect is to be a part of a professional learning community or a professional learning team. 21st century skills are all about collaboration and successful teaching is all about about stealing things from other teachers, stealing best practices, learning all that you can about what works with students today. Uh, learning all you can about how to deal with special personalities in the classroom, special personalities of different students with disabilities, etc. You can best do that by collaboration and working together in a learning community. So every good induction program should talk to teachers about working collaboratively. We no longer go to school and can go choose what we want to teach, shut the door, and be on this island all by ourselves. It's all about communicating with one another and doing what's best for each individual student in that learning community and within that team. Another piece would be to accept, expect systematic, systematic professional development. If a school is really up to muster and wants to implement all of the strategies with fidelity, all their programs with fidelity, then to do that all the new teachers to that building have to constantly be oriented to new programs and have professional development about how to use programs, how to implement discipline models, how to implement behavior, uh, school, positive behavior supports across the board. And those are some just some examples of the types of professional development that must be ongoing. They can't be as professional development op opportunities that that are are uh, you do one this year and then you think that the teachers will just continue that. They have to be ongoing so that you're re constantly refreshing experienced teachers and renewing new teachers in that pro in that program. So professional development has to be systemic. The principal. The district coordinator, the curriculum directors have to plan for those ahead of time. Plan to visit your mentor's classroom. You're going to have a mentor if, you're in a, if you have a teacher induction program in your school district. It's very important that you work with that mentor, as we mentioned earlier, get as much as you can by, uh, from working with that mentor, but go and, and invite that mentor to your classroom and, and hopefully be invited to attend that teacher's classroom. And then finally, Seek out specific strategies. If you hear of a strategy, you read of a strategy, then you know of someone in the district or in your building that's using that strategy. Seek permission and to go in and observe and learn and watch. Watch how other teachers implement positive behavior supports in their building. Implement how other teachers implement the discipline model in their classroom. Implement how other teachers use Marzano's strategies on in teaching instruction that works or whatever whatever it is that the building focus is or whatever the effective strategy is get in those classrooms seek out opportunities to fulfill the expectations of the program so that uh, just about concludes video one is an introduction to teacher induction programs we're going to get more into the mentoring part of teacher induction and we're going to get more into specific strategies that can help teachers be successful in the first and second year of school. 
So until later, I've posted a few other readings. Sometimes I'll be posting videos and links on the website. So to complete lesson one, please go on back to the website and check out the links and the readings for next week. So until next time, we'll see you later.